Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments. So on Friday, March 6th of this year, 2020, the Nintendo PlayStation prototype system finally crossed the auction block through Heritage Auctions and sold for a premium price of $360,000, which includes the 20% buyer's premium. Prominently, directly right after the auction ended, the wonderful buyer or bidder, high bidder, came forward and it turns out that he was a tech multi-millionaire who back during the dot-com era created companies that went bust like pets.com and toys.com so the guy already had money to be able to buy this type of item he already also announced plans that he wants to put it in a quote-unquote museum now i'm going to be doing a video on museums that are going to be upcoming and airing in the next couple of months where i talk about how I'm kind of against the concept of a lot of these private collectors trying to create public museums for the collections that they've acquired. I actually consider it very egotistical, very narcissistic, and I also think that a lot of them are not looking accurately at the costs and the maintenance costs to maintain a museum in today's day and age. I'm not going to talk about it in depth in this video, but let me just state this. Over the last 10 to 20 years in the antiques and collectibles trade, if you look at a lot of private to public museums that focused on Hot Wheels cars, Pez dispensers, Mark's toys, vintage toys, a lot of these more even established collecting categories, a lot of them went bankrupt and belly up within 10 to 20 years. So I do want to focus on that particular topic in an upcoming video. But in this video, I want to mainly talk about the end result of the Nintendo PlayStation prototype system. And it's very interesting because if you visit a lot of collecting categories on this topic, you're going to come across two schools of thought. The first thought is, you know, this item sold for an insane amount of money. I can't believe that somebody out there paid $360,000 to get a Nintendo PlayStation prototype system. This is going to set the world on fire. The other point of thought on the other side of the equation, you know, the original consigner got an offer of one to $1.2 million for this item originally. He took it to auction and the auction pretty much fizzled out. I mean, at one point during the auction, it was at $420,000 with buyer's premium. Heritage had to come in, assess the bids, and thank God they did because they obviously saw some counterfeit bids and it allowed the item to be sold for $360,000. That original consigner took a bath on this particular item because he should have sold it through private sale. Now that he sold it at auction, we have a price history of this item going forward that sets the legitimate price at $360,000. So a lot of people are asking me, what are my thoughts on this auction? And I want to be very blunt and I want to be honest. First, if you go back, I did three videos on this topic already where I talked about this item and the particular auction that was developing as a result of this item. And I said right off the bat, this is not an item that I would invest in long term. This is a very esoteric item. It has a very limited market and it is a bitch to appraise because it is a one of a kind item. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that consider this one of the holy grails in video game collecting and video game history. Honestly guys, I don't see it that way because if video games are going to be established as predominant collectibles going forward and if WADA Games keeps manipulating the market, regardless of how speculative it is, at some point that market's going to stabilize. Now at the point of stabilization, whether that market becomes established or not, a lot of our questions will be answered at that particular point in time, generally 10, 20, 30 years out. However, the market, if it is established, is going to have other iconic and high profile items at auction throughout history, whether it be in the next year, the next five years, the next 10 years, or the next 20 years. Now you can argue a lot of these items may not be as iconic as the Nintendo PlayStation prototype system, but again, that argument is kind of mute because we already know that that item, at least at present day, is only worth $360,000 it is not worth a million or more. Now, if ironically, the original consigner who got offered a million or $1.2 million for that item came to me and said, hey, I found this item in a box of junk for $100 or $200 and I got this offer for $1 million or $1.2 million, what would you do if this was 
your situation that you were in. Well, obviously, I would have took the offer. And the reason I would have took the offer, guys, is, again, this is not an established market. There is no valid price history of this item ever being sold before. Those two aspects or facts of this transaction make this item very, very inherently risky to sell at auction. No matter how prominent the auction is, no matter how well it's advertised in the antiques and collectibles trade and outside the trade, because there's some people out there claiming that, oh, it wasn't marketed properly. I'm sorry. Main financial news media conglomerates like CNBC and even companies that are in the general news media populace like CNN and Fox Business covered this auction in depth. To sit there and say it didn't get traction and it's somehow Heritage's fault is complete nonsense. Heritage did an excellent job promoting this particular item. I give them all the credit in the world. What caused this item to cave at auction was simply that the general interest in paying close to a million dollars for an item like this just wasn't there, which I suspected from the start. Now, to be fair, I thought the item would at least sell for half a million dollars. And when I saw the original bids come in that pushed it to $420,000, I did assume that one final bid or two final bids was going to push it over that amount and it would sell for at least half a million or so, so that at least a lot of these critics would be silenced because, hey, this item at least hit half a million then at that point. Well, ironically, it did not have the ability to do that. And that's why I'm going to go in this direction, guys. Those of you that keep telling me the $100,000 sticker sealed Super Mario Brothers game is a legitimate sale, I'm starting to come back at and I'm starting to say, no, it can't be. Because the Nintendo PlayStation auction was an extremely limited item to the point that there's only one in existence. It is iconic and it only sold for $360,000, guys. To reach the realm of just comic books, you got a long way to go. To reach the popularity and realm of coins, you've got decades to go at this point. There's coins that have sold for $10 million or more. Do some research. There hasn't even been a video game that has sold for upwards of a million dollars as of yet. Even comic books. Comic books are still stuck at the three to four million dollar range. They're not catching up to coins anytime soon. So what's my point? The market for these items is very speculative and is not yet established. Now, a lot of people are asking me, Sean, look at the guy who bought this. Let's say that he wants to hold this item. He puts it in a museum for a small period of time, but then he decides to sell it. Do you see this item selling for half a million, million dollars, million point five dollars, I'm sorry, $1.5 million in the future? The answer, honestly, is no, I do not. I think this item will always have a limited market, and as iconic as it is, it will only attract a few players playing in that particular high-end pool that are willing to get an item like this. Because let's be realistic, guys. And this goes back to a lot of my talking points in the antiques and collectibles trade. Let me use this as an example. I talk about this in depth in a lot of my earlier videos where if somebody has a million dollars net worth or half a million dollars net worth, and they come to me and they go, Sean, I want to hire you to give me some advice in the antiques and collectibles trade as a consultant. And they say to me, I have a half a million dollar net worth and I want to take $100,000 and I want to put it in one item. What is your advice? I would tell them not to do that. Reason being is you are taking a phenomenal risk by tying up one fifth of your net worth in one item and hoping that market continues to rise exponentially. Remember guys, the greatest risk in the antiques and collectibles trade is not taking the plunge. It's taking an uncalculated plunge, putting $100,000 in an item that drops to $80,000 and then stays there for the next 10 to 20 years while you look at it as a quote unquote investment. That's not investment. That's speculation. Investment is an educated guess in something that will produce or has the potential to produce a financial ward. Speculation is pretty much akin to gambling. That's what all these people are doing when they log on the Heritage Auction certified link and they go, hey, I got to get myself a 1987 
copy of The Legend of Zelda that's factory sealed and graded by Wattic Games in 9.2 or 9.4 condition. Oh, look, here's one right now. It's going for $5,000. Well, I'm going to bid six dollars or $7,000 on it because the market's going to keep going up. That's speculation. That's gambling. That is not investing. If you equate that to investing, you are an unsophisticated speculator operating on the trade, hoping and praying that your items are going to be sold to the next Timmy for a higher dollar amount. That is called the greater fool theory. If you want to Google that, look it up. That is what it's occurring in the vintage video game and graded marketplace right now. It is insane. So going back to the Nintendo PlayStation prototype auction, this, in my opinion, would not be a good long-term investment because what nobody else is looking at is the cost to maintain this item, the cost to insure it, and the cost to store it. The plastic on this particular item, if you look at it, it's made from the same plastic that the original Super Nintendo was made from. If you talk to anybody who has an original vintage Super Nintendo in this day and age, I guarantee you, nine chances out of ten, their systems are starting to turn yellow because it was made out of the cheap plastic. Complicating things even more for a system like this, the item only plays Super Famicom games. There's no disc that you can pop in the drive and at least play a demo of an upcoming Nintendo PlayStation game. As a result of that, it has a very limited market. Now, there is one caveat here. If over the coming years, someone would find a demo disc or a game, like maybe Seventh Guest, that was rumored to come out for this particular system that is legitimate and is somewhat playable for this item, that could possibly turn the market around and people will say, you know what, I want to get that demo disc or that game and also the system. Then more collectors, more well-profile, wealthy individuals could come into the market and say, you know what, I'm going to bid up this item if it comes to auction again because I have this game over here that plays on it. That would cause more excitement for an item like this. But given what it is, given its history, and given how it's going to be maintained going forward, I think the cost is too great for the average person to own an item like this. So if somebody came to me and said, I have a million dollar net worth, I want to go after the Nintendo PlayStation prototype system, you know what my answer would be? You can't tie up a third of your net worth in one speculative, non-established collecting market. And by the way, just so that we're clear here, if somebody came to me with a million dollar net worth and said, I want to buy a $330,000 coin and put all my money in that for the long term, I would also talk them out of it. 33% is too much of your net worth to tie up in antiques and collectibles, especially if it's focused on one collecting category or in particular one item that is the lesson for today i hope you learned something from this video if you disagree with me please feel free to leave a comment i love all my viewers and subscribers whether they agree with me or not as i said at the beginning of this channel some of the topics i'm going to talk about on this channel are going to either rub you the wrong way or cause a lot of frustration i get that however i'm here to tell the truth as i see it am i wrong i can be wrong from time to time but I'm right more often than I'm wrong. And that's what makes the difference between a successful investor to an unsuccessful investor. So remember that going forward, guys. Thank you and have a great night.